In this video, we're going to look at an example of how we can use partial pressures to characterize equilibrium and calculate the equilibrium constant. So in this example, let's read through the problem first. The following equilibrium pressures at a certain temperature were observed for the, re for the following reaction. We got NO2 decomposing into uh, NO and O2 gas, right? And what it does is it gives you the partial pressures at equilibrium for each one in ATM. It says calculate the value of the equilibrium constant K at this temperature. So just from reading the problem, you might be like, wait, hold up. We were given a, um, um, a, an equation that used concentrations in order to calculate the, the equilibrium constant. How are we going to use these partial pressures in order to, to do the same thing? Well, for that, we're going to have to revisit the ideal gas law because concentration actually is there in the ideal gas law. You just have to massage the equation in order to get it out of it, right? So let, let's look at it. So if we revisit our ideal gas law, right? So we got the ideal gas law, right? PV is equal to NRT, right? Where N is your number of moles, R is your gas constant, T temperature, V is your volume, and P is your pressure, right? Um, Concentration is here. You just you might not see it yet. But like I said, if we massage the equation, we can uh, show that concentration is in this equation. Right. So let's let's do something. Let's um, let's divide by volume on both sides. And I'm going to write this in a very particular way so that we can see it. Right. So I divided by volume on both sides and I put this in parentheses because this is the concentration. Right. The number of moles of your gas over the volume. This is the concentration of your gas. Right. If it's in a gas mixture. Right. Then this is your concentration. And I'll use the uh, for the sake of this equation, I'll use a, a capital C to denote concentration. So you could say that P is equal to CRT. Right. Where C is the concentration of your gas in a particular mixture, right? So we can um, go back to our expression for K, right? And we can write out an expression for K for this, uh, for this reaction here, right? So we can write an expression for K. for our equilibrium constant, right? So um, so we can write out the expression for K and I'm gonna use this same notation of C for the concentration just for the sake of consistency in this video. So the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of O2, that's gonna be your numerator for the equilibrium constant expression. And then in the denominator, you get the concentration of NO2 squared. Right. So this is your um, so this is going to be your expression for the equilibrium constant. Now, it gives you it tells you that there's going to be a constant temperature. Right. It says at a certain temperature. So the temperature is constant. So for the sake of a constant temperature, right, this pressure and concentration are going to be directly proportional. So at a constant temperature, we can actually rewrite this concentration of uh, this equilibrium constant expression in the following way, right? So at constant temperature, so at constant T, so let me show you what I'm doing here. So at constant T, we're basically saying that the partial pressure of a given uh, substance in a mixture is going to be directly proportional to the concentration of that substance in the mixture. So we can rewrite this equilibrium constant expression in terms of the partial pressures. So you have the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of O2 over the partial pressure of NO2 squared, right? So now all we have to do is just substitute all of our partial pressures in and we get the final result. So the Partial pressure of NO is given here. So we got 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 ATM up top. And uh, O2, we got 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 ATM, right? Over the denominator, we got 0.55 ATM. 
that is also squared. And so that gives you a final value of K of 6.29 times 10 to the negative 13. Right, so this is our value for the equilibrium constant calculated from the partial pressures. Now, let's uh, let's interpret this K value, right? So K is uh, much, much less than one in this case. So that means K, since it is less than one, is going to favor the reactants, right? It favors the reactants because that uh, concentration of the reactants is gonna be greater at equilibrium, right? Uh, since this K is less than one, that's what we get from the equilibrium constant expression. Okay, cool. Um, so hopefully this gives you a good introduction into how to use partial pressures and shows you how to use partial pressures to characterize equilibrium.